Concerns have been developing in recent years about what appears to be an increase in the number of instances of blood clots all over the world. These clots, which could potentially be fatal, can present themselves in a variety of ways, including as deep vein thrombosis, pulmonary embolism, a heart attack, or a stroke. It is essential to diagnose a blood clot as quickly as possible and seek appropriate medical attention in order to cure it and avoid the difficulties that can arise from them. The risk of these blood clots has significantly increased, particularly for individuals who had COVID. According to the available data, getting infected with the COVID virus is linked to an increase in the risk of developing a condition known as deep vein thrombosis, DVT, as well as a 33-fold increase in the risk of developing a potentially fatal blood clot on the lung within the first 30 days after becoming infected. The findings, which were published in the British Medical Journal on Thursday, could help explain a doubling in the prevalence of blood clots in England since the start of the epidemic, as well as an increase in the number of deaths from blood clots. This is in comparison with the same times in 2018 and 2019. They also serve to put into perspective the extremely low increased risk of developing blood clots that is connected with the COVID-19 vaccine. The degree of complications associated with COVID-19 is much stronger and lasts for much longer than what we might be getting after vaccination," said Dr. Frederick Ho, a lecturer in public health at the University of Glasgow, who was not involved in the research. Dr. Ho was one of the authors of the study but did not take part in its conduct. Even persons who are only experiencing mild symptoms and do not require hospitalization may have a slight increase in their chance of developing blood clots. Although prior study had shown that contracting COVID was related with an increased risk of blood clots, it was unknown how long this risk remained or whether even mild infections increased people's risk. In addition, it was unknown whether mild infections also raised people's risk. In total, they found that there was a 33-fold increased risk of pulmonary embolism, a 5-fold increased risk of deep vein thrombosis, and an approximately 2-fold increased risk of bleeding in the first 30 days following infection. After becoming infected, people remained at an elevated risk of developing a pulmonary embolism for a period of 6 months, and for bleeding and DVT for a period of between 2 and 3 months. Even people with modest COVID had a threefold increased risk of DVT and a sevenfold increased risk of pulmonary embolism. This is despite the fact that the dangers were highest in patients with more severe illnesses. Those who had minor infections did not have an increased risk of bleeding according to the study's findings. A nonprofit known as Thrombosis UK has reportedly issued a warning that the number of deaths that are caused by blood clots is more than was anticipated. The group also demanded greater transparency regarding the measures that hospitals are taking to reduce patient risk. Having clear communication is obviously very important. Before the epidemic, transparency ought to have been the primary objective, the basis for all of the research and medication that was conducted. It was common practice to publish data obtained from hospitals. The National Health Service NHS in England made the decision in March 2020 to stop collecting data on venous thromboembolism in order to focus more on the pandemic situation at the time. However, the data collection and publication have not yet restarted since the decision was made. Given the amount of time that has elapsed since the decision was made and the fact that the charity has inquired as to why they should not, this is inexcusable. In England, the number of people aged 19 or older who passed away due to a venous thromboembolism was 12,457 in the 2019 to 2020 academic year, but it was 14,846 in the 2021 to 2022 academic year, according to data provided by the NHS. According to the chief executive of Thrombosis UK, the calculations demonstrate that there has effectively been a 20% increase in blood clots, which is a devastating statistic because it results in the loss of thousands of lives and the destruction of families. It is essential for NHS England to get back to collecting data throughout the entire country. There is unquestionably a demand for something like this. Almost immediately after that, they proceed to showcase specific scenarios, such as this one with a man who lost his mother as a result of the case being mishandled. This was really heightened on Wales Online, which is yet another local website. Over the past few days, Wales Online has been covering the same theme in relation to this tragedy. Now that you must have an understanding of how the blood clots are increasing, let us examine what the early indications of this condition are, and how one may treat it once they have recognized it in themselves. The first sign could be inflammation, soreness, or tenderness in the affected part of the body. This is a common symptom of deep vein thrombosis, DVT, which typically affects the deep veins of the leg. There is a possibility that the affected leg will swell, hurt, or feel sensitive. 
In most cases, the swelling is confined to the region just above the clot, and the affected leg could feel warm to the touch. The next one could be warmth and redness over the area where the clot is located. The skin over the afflicted area may feel warm or seem red or discolored as a result of the clot, which is produced by an obstruction in the flow of blood and inflammation. Another one could be skin that is bluish or grayish in color. Because of the decreased amount of blood flow, the skin over the clot may look grayish or pale in some circumstances. The fourth one is PE. It means pulmonary embolism and is diagnosed when a blood clot goes to the lungs and stops the blood flow. Symptoms of PE include sudden shortness of breath. This can result in an abrupt difficulty in breathing, which is frequently accompanied by the sensation of being unable to get a breath at all. Another sign on the list could be pain in the chest that is made worse by taking deep breaths or coughing. The pain in the chest that is connected with PE can range from being intense and stabbing to a dull aching. Taking deep breaths, coughing, or exerting yourself physically often makes it worse. A person suffering from PE may experience an elevated heart rate or an irregular heartbeat as a result of the strain that is placed on the heart and the decreased oxygen flow. Coughing should also be taken seriously, which may or may not be accompanied by blood. Pneumonia can cause coughing, which in more severe cases may be accompanied by the coughing up of blood. This condition is referred to as hemoptysis. Next one is acute onset of numbness or weakness, typically confined to one side of the body. A stroke is a rapid onset of weakness or numbness on one side of the body that can be caused by a blood clot that forms in the brain. One side of the face, arm, or leg is frequently affected by this condition. Stroke can cause difficulty speaking, slurred speech, or difficulty understanding others' words. This can also result in problems comprehending others' speech. A terrible headache that comes on suddenly is a symptom that some people experience during a stroke. It is possible that other symptoms such as dizziness, disorientation, or loss of consciousness will accompany it at the same time. Stroke can cause problems with balance and coordination, which can lead to difficulties walking, dizziness, or a loss of coordination. Stroke can also cause problems with walking. In order to alleviate these symptoms, it is strongly recommended that you seek medical attention as soon as possible and start taking the appropriate medications, such as anticoagulants, compression therapy, thrombectomy, and other similar procedures. A proactive approach is required in order to avoid the formation of blood clots. Modifications to one's way of life, such as engaging in regular physical activity, avoiding extended periods of inactivity, and maintaining a healthy weight can all assist in lowering the risk. Maintaining a healthy level of hydration, giving up smoking, and effectively controlling underlying diseases such as hypertension and diabetes are all important factors. In addition, adherence to prescribed drugs and following medical advice are critical components of effective preventative care for persons who are at a greater risk. If you have any further information that would be useful in relation to this subject, please feel free to share it with the community in the comment section below.